this is a big moment personally because a few years ago we did a video on this channel where we had the unfortunate passing of the Macho Man Randy Savage and last night two nights ago on Raw we had expected announcements of the Macho Man going into the Hall of Fame and it was official the Macho Man Randy Savage is finally going to the WWE Hall of Fame. It's about time. I mean, sure, you have the allegations years ago of Stephanie and Macho and those those women beat the like a dead horse. And but the main thing I think the main reason Macho Man's in the Hall of Fame is not because of Randy Popo saying, Okay, you few months ago, okay, that Randy wants to go into the Hall of Fame, but Randy said he wanted to have the Popo family, which, I, if Randy said that, I don't doubt it. Which, I, I you know, respect the wishes of his, of his father, Angelo Popo, uh, Larry, Lanny Popo, who you guys probably know as a genius, or leaving Lanny Popo from back in the day, but, I mean, if that's what Randy said, then it would make sense to do that, out of respect. But, and then a few minutes later, my, he's like, okay, why not just put him in the Hall of Fame? Uh, you know, if we put, they put him in the Hall of Fame, he won't go to the Hall of Fame. Or if Lanny won't go to the Hall of Fame, I mean. And then a few months ago, we had a uh, Roger Man the Mock documentary. And then um, a few months after that, we had another one with Lanny on there. So there was some kind of deal made. And then the uh, podcast the live network podcast of the Stone Cold Steve Austin show, or the Steve Austin show, or whatever, um, and they discussed uh, Savage, uh, him going to the Hall of Fame, and pretty much pressured Vince McMahon to say yes, and apparently he didn't want to lie to Stone Cold, so I guess uh, six weeks later now, it looks like, since that, since that day, Randy Savage is in the Hall of Fame. Now there is some speculation to why they would do it as the first Hall of Fame. I'm not. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying it's not overdue, which it is. As the point as the headliner, the first man in the Hall of Fame, it makes sense because what the first inductee usually is is the headliner, like Bret Hart was a foot cook uh, in 2006, and Bruno San Martino was a few weeks later, but he was third or fourth or whatever the last year, two years ago. But. Um, a lot of people were saying, oh, they inducted them early. They were, I mean, there was no doubt he's giving the Hall of Fame this year. There was no doubt. But doing it uh, a couple of nights ago instead of like maybe next week or a week after uh, was probably because of the, bowl, the uh, BCS bowl games and the SEC bowl games and all that stuff. Just because, you know, they were going ahead to head with them. So you might as well have Randy Savage on the Hall of Fame have a lot more tickets, health ticket sales, because it's expected that event with TMZ and everyone knows it's going to happen, so you might as well be there for the the moment. Like, where were you when Randy Savage is in the Hall of Fame? But Randy Savage, what can I say about Randy Savage that hasn't already been said? I mean, first thing, I mean, fucking Slim Jims is what people for, would probably first think if you're not a wrestling fan. Is what you would think of, or you would probably actually think of Bone Saw. <laughs> I can't believe I'm, I'm bringing that out, but Bone Saw from, from fucking Spider Man. That was amazing when that was out, and back in the day when I was little, I didn't really watch a lot of wrestling because my parents didn't want me to watch it. And the Macho Man was fucking bone saw to me when I when I saw him on Spider Man. But I knew it's like, hey, it's Randy Savage because I was a wrestling fan. And, you know, you know people. There are some looks you just can't, you know, deny. Okay, that that's that's Hulk. Like you see someone like oh, that's Ric Flair, that's Hulk Hogan, this is Randy Savage or whoever. He had a look to him that was unlike anybody else in this business. Energy that was like nobody else. When you saw Macho Man had cut a promo, you listened, you watched, you did whatever you needed to do. I mean, it's unbelievable. I never thought this day would come, and it came, finally. Um, but, I mean, seriously, look at Savage's career. A multiple-time Intercontinental Champion, a multiple-time uh, World Wrestling Federation Champion, not uh, WWE, but former WWE Champion. Um, I mean, hell, WCW he had a free world title reigns, and not to mention everything else he did in his illustrious career. But 
if anything, the thing that comes to mind is there was never a wrestler at at least I mean, there were wrestlers that had managers, but there was never one where a, a manager was the focal point of his career, and that was the late, great Miss Elizabeth. Kind of botched there, but Miss Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth was the focal point of his career, pretty much. If you watch Savage from the beginning, well, not from the beginning, because he, he didn't have Elizabeth uh, when he first came to the WWE. But for the rest of his career, though, Elizabeth, Elizabeth was is and probably still is one of the four points of his career it, unless you're not counting the gorgeous George thing in WCW but still I mean in WWE there has never been a, a wrestler where a manager has been I'm probably repeating myself but has been like the focal point and the main point of a career you watch all pay reviews on the, on the network you watch all pay reviews of Savage in general and up until 92, 93, when he was in the WWE, uh, his focal point was Elizabeth. I mean, they had a they had the wedding of Elizabeth and Macho Man, made him at SummerSlam one year. So that does not say that how big that statement is. It's it's huge. And um, but you, you you look at wrestling and you look at the matches Macho Man had, potential five stars everywhere in every match he's had. Especially with WrestleMania 3, Pontiac Silverdome, Intercontinental Championship, Reiki, the Dragon Steamboat, and Randy Savage. One of the best matches that still holds up to this day. And, I mean, God. You know, that is that in itself is, is a Hall of Fame match. It's good for the Hall of Fame. But Savage in himself... I mean, what can I say? What can I really say? It has not already been said about the Macho Man. It's it's just great to have him in the Hall of Fame, and it's about damn time. And for one night only, the Mega Powers reunite in spirit, mind you, as Hulk Hogan uh, will induct the Macho Man into the Hall of Fame. And um, other people have also been saying that uh, it's Hogan's probably not the best person, but who's who would it be? Elizabeth's been long dead. Uh, Warrior was inducted last year, so it kind of makes sense with the feud they had at WrestleMania 8 was a great match as well, and he passed away, unfortunately, uh, uh, around this time last year, last April, so that wouldn't be a better choice, I mean, Mr. Perfect's long gone, um, I would probably would say one of the Papos, but Lanny Papo wouldn't be there, it wouldn't make sense to induct, um, have that happen, it would make sense for his brother to induct him into the Hall of Fame, uh, or his father. But I doubt that'll happen either. So Hulk Hogan is probably the logical choice to do this. But I mean, I don't know how to sign off here. I probably can't do the ooh yeah because my voice is kind of uh, not the best. But you know what? It, it's just amazing that I'm probably speechless for the first time in a long time. And Macho Madness will live forever. <laughs>